something awesome. I'm sure I'm wrong, but uh, maybe I'm right. A little bit Ishbitzer and a little bit like, like this. You know, when God wanted to give us a Torah on Mount Sinai, you remember? Like, I wouldn't say God put an ad in the New York Times, but there was an an ad on the sky, right? The whole world is invited to come to Mount Sinai. And just remember, the only ones who showed up was us heathen, right? So the Hedig of says, doesn't make sense. Meaning the whole world, nobody wants to come? It doesn't make sense, you know? So he says, the only nation who came as a nation is us Jewish people. But people from all over the world, right? All the Nishamas. You know, when you meet a good person whose mom is not into killing and stealing, and it's not because he read and read the sages you shouldn't kill, heard God's voice, you know? See, you have to realize we are living in a world full of anger. And you know, killing does not mean you take out the knife and you kill. You don't do that. But, you know, you can yell at somebody so much that you can almost kill them, right? Or you can ignore somebody. Right? You know what the Gemara says when God says don't kill? Every person heard it on the level of their own, right? A very cross person just heard them take a knife. Better person hurt, don't yell, right? And so on. But this is what I want to share with you. So why didn't the world come? And one day, when Mashiach is coming, suddenly Jerusalem will turn on the whole world, right? Because you see, the whole world is coming to Jerusalem. When Messiah is coming, what did not turn them on on Mount Sinai? And what will turn them on uh, from your shrine? So he says like this. 
I'm a great scholar, right? And I have a Gemara in front of me, the Talmud I'm learning. And next to me, let's say it's a little like Eskimo, right? Never seen a Jew in his life. Never heard the word Gemara. He's sitting next to me. Imagine I'm sitting on a plane, right? Next, ne- next to me it was really one time a little Eskimo was sitting next to me. It was cutest in the world, right? Just okay. So I'm sitting there, and the Eskimo thinks, you know, I don't know what he's doing. But you know something? Facts of life. It begins shocking a little bit. And I began to say to the Sadeh, the prayer of the way, you know. So the cute little Eskimo saw me. I was praying. So he says, let's pray together. Hey. That he got, right? So the Ishbizu says, learning, you may not turn on the whole world. Praying. If you really pray, God was praying with you. If you really pray, right? I want to tell you something. How much would you have? Would we have to pray that everyone in the world should reach their own roots and wipe out all the evil? You see what it is. And we haven't turned on the world yet. We haven't turned on the world yet. You know what it is? Because we haven't fixed our own roots yet. Yeah. Now just give me your sweetest attention for one minute. This is an unbelievable story. I'm sure most of you remember it. The Heilige Rebbe Raboch, the Vashemta's grandson, says to somebody, <coughs> you ever come to Kosovo? To the Heilige Rebbe Kosovo? So he says, yeah, I have some business in Kosovo, I'm going there all the time. He says, do me a favor, when you come back, you know, Kosovo is the grandfather of the Vishnitzer. He says, do me a favor, you go to Kosovo, bring me back a melody. Okay, he com- comes to Kosovo, and he wants so much to pick up a melody, <coughs> but the Kosovo is not there. Every Shabbos he's there in the neighborhood, the Kosovo isn't there. One night, on an ordinary Wednesday night, the Kosovo was there, and the Heilige Kosovo is counting the Omer, and after the Heilige Kosovo, Counts the Omer, he's like humming a melody. It's not even much of a melody, just a lot. <coughs> so this host obviously has good ears, picked it up and thinks nothing. Comes back to Rabbi Rabor. He says, I'm so sorry to disappoint you, I was there, but the Helige Kosva was not, never there on Shabbos, and only I heard him counting the Omer, and after the Omer, he was humming a little melody. Ah, oh, he says. That's why I send you, because I wanted to hear this melody mm-hmm. from counting the Omer. So he hums the melody, not much of a melody. So, so that night, the Heilige Rebbe was counting the Omer. After the Omer, the Heilige Rebbe humming this melody. So then Rebbe. The Heidi Rebbeuch says, the Heidi Rebbeuch says, let me tell you the story of this melody. In the time of my holy grandfather, the Holy Bak Shem, there were two neighbors. One was Jewish and one was not Jewish. So the Jew bought from the non-Jewish neighbor a field which he saw right next to his, he bought it from him. After a few days he comes to him and he says, I tell you, I began digging, and I found a treasure in the field. And you only sold me the field, but you didn't sell me the treasure. So I'm bringing you back the treasure. (coughs) 
couldn't believe. At least I can't believe a person should be so honest. Just I can't believe it. So that night, this little non-Jewish neighbor invited the whole village to the to the Kretschmer. He says, "All the drinking is on me." You know, he got rich. Then he stood on the table, and he was drunk, really, and he was singing this little melody. And he was saying, "Great is the God of Israel." Great is the God of Israel. So here I don't want to share with you. What does it have to do with counting the Omer? What does this melody have to do with counting the Omer? For this is what we were learning. On Pesach, God takes us up so, so high. And God shows us that our relationship to God does not depend on what we are doing. He loves us the most, right? Take parents and children. I love my children because they are good, or I love my children because they have good marks. Stupid, right? I love them the most. But I would like them to be good. Not because I, I love them less if they're not so good. Because I want them to get their act together, right? So while I'm up so high Saturday night, then I come back to this world and I realize, you know why I'm making so many mistakes? Because I've got to fix my roots. You see, the roots of my roots my relationship to God, the roots of my roots is close to God. But I need another fixing yet. So I'm beginning to fix. And I want you to remind me to come back where I'm saying it. Do you know that counting the Omer is the only one mitzvah? If I make a mistake, I can't fix it anymore? It's crazy. If I miss one day, I'm out. Because if I make a mistake, that means I didn't fix anything so far. Because the whole thing of Tzir's Omer is fixing my roots or stop making mistakes, right? You made a mistake, you can. Give out, right? So what is it when I fix my roots? Then I'm fixing the world, right? So therefore, each time I count the Omer, <coughs> say, most of the world, I'm fixing my roots. That means I'm ready to fix the whole world. And just remember, how do I fix my roots? The prayer has to be so deep. So deep, right? Awesome. So awesome, dear. Then the world is ready to go with me. Then the world is ready. So after I count the Omer, as a master of the world, take me back to the Bessemekdash. Remember we were learning it. The Omer is the greatest. You know what, what Xida says? Anything which is not a contradiction is not for real. Anything which is not everything is not for real, right? Remember we're learning it when you love somebody very much, it makes your heart whole and it breaks your heart. It's both. On one hand, God is there, God is not there. On one hand, the world is so good because God created it, there's so much evil in the world. <clears throat> On one hand, I have to look at myself. I have to look at myself, Gewalt, I'm the holiest. I'm not, right? I'm not and I am. 
everything. So you must feel so amazed. On one hand, is begging God, can you please give me the light of Pesach back? Saturday night, the mama said, could feel that my roots are so holy and I'm so close to you. And all this closeness got lost. Give it back to me. On the other hand, God says, if you lost it, if you lost one night, you lost it. I mean, the whole thing is to give me back what I lost. Right? <coughs> all those contradictions. But the thing is, you see, while we count the Omer, the most important thing is at that moment, God gives me really back this mamish flying on eagle's wings. And one more very deep thing. You know what it is? Why, why isn't the world getting together? Because the whole world is judging it, each other by what you did. Imagine if you could absolutely wipe out this feeling that I'm judging by what you did. I don't care what you did. I absolutely don't care. It's awesome, right? If I can be on that level, so. And you see, at the end of last day before Shuas, God gives it back to us. Because suddenly we loved each other so much. We can show me so much. Okay, I hate to be drastic, but we have to stand up and count the omen, yeah? And this is not to make you feel bad, but if by any chance some of you really forgot to come to Omo or never did. You can still see what you have to do. This is the deeper step. If you really forgot to come to Omo, then you're out, right? How do you get back? There's somebody who did come to Omo. Then you stand next to that person. Then he says a blessing. And you say, Omen, they are counting together. You know what that means? It is unbelievable what one person can do for the other. It is unbelievable what I can do when I fix my roots a little bit. And you see, if you would tell me, can you please fix my roots? I'd say, okay, what did you do, right? Make a long list of all your mistakes, of all your evil. Then I'd tell you, oh, you have to fast from Shabbos to Shabbos. And... Uh, I don't know what. <coughs> a person stands next to me in shul, I don't know his name, mm-hmm. don't know who he is, what he is, when he is, who she is. I say, listen, you know, I forgot to count the Omer. Can I count with you? I don't have to know anything. You see, on one hand, the Omer is that this great light of Pesach, which is beyond me, should shine into my head. And yet, on the other hand, it's beyond everything. Beyond, beyond. What do we know? But I want to tell you just the cover of the bar, which the Rebbe really needs to go for a and I should really be well. There's a Torah from the Alter Rebbe. Before you receive the Torah, you have to count the Omer. What's so special about counting the Omer? I'll let you know exactly what you did yesterday and you know what you have to do today. Sounds right. And you know where you're at. Let's go. Yeah.
Thank you. 
You know what it is? Rav Nachman says when you live together, it's not that instead of learning alone, you learn with other people. When people are together, something is coming down from heaven, which wasn't there before. It's always there. I don't know how much I really, how much we really got to the bottom of this Ishmael the Torah, but maybe we did. I wouldn't say we got to the roots of the roots of the Torah, but we touched the roots of the Torah a little bit. Shlomo, it's the roots that you're adding now, that you're touching. These are your roots that you're adding. Each one in his favor, right? Through the egg about. I want you to know that I'm not only really about to thank I, I don't know if some of you know that my great 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 grandfather was a Chosid of the Meshavah. Oh. Of the Ishbetzin. First Ishbetzin, yeah? Ishbetzin is the dynasty. Ishbetzin is a city not far from Lublin. And um, 1840, Mamashim. He, he had no, mamish no food in the house, it was so poor. So he heard that they're looking for a rabbi in Germany, in Lübeck. So he went to Germany. This time my whole family came to Germany. Unbelievable. You mean there were students? Yeah. <laughs> Never know that. Right. You know what happens there? The mayor at that time, and the anti-Semitism was awesome. It was maybe a little better than Poland or Russia, but... So the mayor wanted to make a new tax on the Jews. So my holy great, 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 great grandfather went to the mayor of the city. He said, I'm telling you, we don't have it. So he said, what do you mean you don't have it? How come you have money to invite guests Friday night? <coughs> so he said, okay, you don't have to pay the taxes, but from now on, any Jew who invites a guest by the night will be arrested. And now about my holy great grandfather. So this night he had 14 guests. So suddenly the police came. And they arrested him and the 14 guests. And they put them, my dad, in prison for every day. A guest, 14 days. And all the 14 guests, he has a bonus. Also in prison. So there was a letter, my fa I know, sadly enough, my father passed away. My father had unbelievable letters from our forefathers. It was all stolen, I don't know who did it. But whatever it is. And the letter my great great grandfather writes, they want you to know I was in prison for 14 days, which was also simple Torah. And obviously we didn't have a Torah in prison. In fact, we had no books in prison. But let me tell you, it was the highest and most of my life. He says, I mean, can you imagine those 14 people, the way they were dancing in the prison cell, must have been the most lowest primitive conditions, right? Not to be believed. Right? I'm always thinking I'm from Australia. Where should let me have a taste? I was a simple story of my holy great grandfather, the way he danced in prison with those 14 years. You know. Oh, Amish, oh man. <laughs> All of us, yeah. The simple story of the great grandfather of prison is his. Your simple story that you're making, you make it all the time. Yeah, I know, but it could, it could add a little bit, a little sugar, you know, a little pepper. <laughs> you're right, Uzi. See what it is, if I say I want to be exactly like my grandfather, I'm cutting myself short, because God had my grandfather. And my grandfather didn't bring the Messiah, right? So that means my grandfather was very holy, but something was missing, right? And you know what's, what is a little bit wrong with the whole, so to speak, establishment today, from establishment? They want to take our young people, make them exactly like my Boba Mazay. And this is not what God needs. He had them. 
God does need, a uh, member of Nachman says, God does not need a sending twice. God is not a Yente. He cannot stand the sending twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rav Nachman says, if you doubt it today like yesterday, God says, thank you very much, but please don't go on my nerves, you know? <laughs> you did it yesterday. <clears throat> and you know, remember that what Shenta says, what's called a real Shabbos. The real Shabbos is that this Shabbos was never before. Never before. I dare you, how do you know how much you love a person? It's very simple. When you meet them, and the second time you meet them is like the first time, very beautiful. You don't really love them. Because when you really love them, something else. The business meetings are what you said. Have you ever been by the Holy War twice? Okay. Rock of the set there was a tent. Holy War. So it comes to Shavuos. It says, we grabbed the Mincha Chadosh Hashem. Comes to Shavuos, Mama, when we fix our roots. Is there anything older than roots? If I ask you, what's the oldest thing on the tree? The roots, right? And on Shavuos, when we fix our roots, then we realize, Gewalt our roots are new. Gewalt. Not only my roots of yesterday, my roots today. Everything is new. Everything is not new. So I hope I'll see you tomorrow in a little bit, but we got it. Bless you with the good shoes. And please don't, as much as I want to receive the Torah like my forefathers, I want to receive my Torah. The same for Canaan. God give me my portion of the Torah. God give me my portion. And, um, <coughs> What do we know? What do we know? I, I shared with you already a few times, but maybe there's one person who wasn't here. You know the Nitziv, the Rosh Shiva of Elijah, told him to the first time of any. His father wanted him to be a tailor. Because when he was in the Chedi, he was so wise, he didn't learn. So finally, he said, make a tailor out of him. So that night, his father told him, okay, tomorrow. I'm giving you over to a tailor to teach you how to be a good tailor, right? That night he went off, came to a big yeshiva, and he became the, the, I mean, great is not the word, right? The greatest in the world. The greatest in the world. Then when his first, he wrote so many forms, he wrote one book after the other. So when his first book came out, he made a big feast. So people asked him, why are you making this big feast? This is what he said. I want you to know last night I had a dream. That I became a tailor. I was a good tailor, very honest, fixed all the pants, never stole, never ruined, very good tailor. I'm coming up to heaven, and I'm sure I'm going to paradise because I didn't do anything wrong. Suddenly the door opens, and angels come in, one book after the other, one tape after the other. And they say, you know something? You could have written all those books. You could have written all those books. And I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain. What I could have done is my life. That I woke up. It hurt so much. And I realized I really didn't become a tailor. And really did write the book. This one book. So I'm making a big feast. So I want to bless all of us, all the books God wants us to write. And we should write them. And I just want to add I don't want to write my book on ordinary paper. I want to write the book on a paper which is red with my tears. And as much as I like my tears, but the paper, I want to be soaking wet with the tears of my forefathers. Because who knows how much they cried that I should be alive, he should be alive here. 
and God should give us a little bit of time, we should have something to say. Not to say. And we, I don't know which father it was, and which Friday night she was praying so hard when she came to life that we are here. What do we know, right? You know, I have to tell you something. Forgive me if I get long. You know, I have this song, The Whole World's Waiting to Sing Song of Shabbos. When, uh, when my father left this world, he stole his long. I was walking behind the coffin and I was thinking, you know, some people are rich and they leave your money in Switzerland and in, in Paris. My father didn't leave me one penny. You know what my father left for me? I'm a Shabbos. So in my father's house, Shabbos. I remember my brother and I, when we woke up, when we were three, four years old, the first thing we always asked, when is Shabbos? <laughs> Mom, you couldn't wait for Shabbos. And, uh, you know, sometimes we didn't trust even our mother. We thought, she must be lying. According to us, it's today Shabbos, you know? <laughs> you know, my children are when three years old. Anyway. <laughs> so I thought to myself, Kvalt, my father left Shabbos for me. So this melody was going around in my head. And um, so then the whole year when my father, when it wasn't over left for my father, <coughs> I really, I had the privilege of really singing the song of Shabbos. Some of you may remember 1967. Yeah. I know Valerie remembers and some of the heavenly and uh, maybe woven, I will see. Sing Mamish for hours. I remember one time I gave a concert at the University of California in Los Angeles on a Saturday night, and it was still hippie days when the world was, didn't look at the watch all the time. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I was begging people to give me the tape because I made up new words. We were singing it, I don't know how long. But anyway, in that song, before I sing it, I would say like this. That you know, there's there's uh, seven for seven in space. There's a missile in space, right? I said I was praying in my dream that God should put me on a missile in time. Let's make it fast. A little bit. I said I want to give me a missile in time. But I don't want to go forward. I need a missile to go backward. I want this missile to take me back to a little city in Poland. And I want it to be Friday night. And I want to stay outside the window. And I want to see my brother kingdom. And I want to see my baby, my brother, blessing one of the children, all the children, one of the children. And one of the angels telling me, you see this little boy there? It's your great grandfather. And then I will sing the song of Shabbos. You know? Never know. First of all, you never know when the gates of heaven are open. Never know. And you don't know whose blessing reaching at what moment. You know, for me, I'm sure for you too, sometimes you ask, say to a person, can you bless me? And they say, no, no, what's your blessing? What's your blessing? You need my blessing. What are you? So what is the blessing? The blessing for What's the first thing God says of all? All the blessings are in your hands. And I just want to say this to you and all of us. We should always be privileged to bless ourselves and we should bless our children all the time. And that, yes, I mean, what's a holy option to yours? And this option to story. The Heilige option goes to the son in law of the Heilige Vidit Shoiba, the Heilige Razlaru. He was not even married yet to his daughter, to the 
Lili Shoff's daughter, but you know, and Lili Shoff, his children get engaged when they're four years old. And then Baba Mitzvah, so he was five. So Rob Shoff goes up to him and says, I know that one day you'll be a big Rebbe, and you'll bless thousands of people. I want you to give me your first blessing. So he says, I'm five years old, and you're a big Rebbe, right? First of all, you don't need my blessing. And second, uh, he didn't want to. So the officer said to him, listen to me, little brother, let me tell you something. When I was five, the Heilig of Levi Yitzchak came to visit my father, the Heilig of Mendel Dominska. And the Levi Yitzchak came on fire, came up to me and says, hey, I told him, one day you'll be a big heaven. You bless thousands of people. I want you to give me your first blessing. And he says, you know something? I didn't bless him. And he says, every day I get older. I regret it more and more. Why didn't I give him my first blessing? Anyway, I want to bless you and me. We should never, ever regret, regret that we didn't give this person our blessing. Then, when it comes to people, I tell you. You know, the Yitta Kodesh, we were talking so much the whole week about the Yitta Kodesh comes over to Lelava. You know, there's two best friends. They were the top students in Lublin. And usually the Yitta Kodesh from Shiska would come to Lelava, pick up from Dovet, and they would walk to Lublin. The saddest thing about Rabdovid and Lelova was that he stopped in every house to say hello. In every state, I mean, he came and he always took with him 10,000 tons of candies to give out to the kids and everything. <coughs> and the Yitta Kodesh, you know, he was a different, a different person. Oh, she didn't have stamps in It's going on his nerves. You know, from Lelov, to Lublin is maybe two days walking. They're already walking for two weeks because they stop <laughs> everywhere. This has one my house. Finally, the Yitak Kodesh says to the head, you know, listen, I love you, you're my best friend, but I'm at the end. I want to get to Lublin tonight. Please don't stop anymore. Right? You can go see it. It's two holy hippies. The Yitak Kodesh, Rabdovala, slapped me himself on the highway. So Rabdovala says, okay, he says, I won't stop anymore so much. But, I, <laughs> but I, I just have to make one more stop. It's a must by Moshe the Baker. The Yiddish Kodesh says, you know, my patience was at the end. I said, you go to Moshe the Baker, I'm going to Lublin. After that, the Yiddish Kodesh says, my whole life, I regret it. Why didn't I go to Moshe? So I want to bless all of us. We should never miss out on giving somebody a blessing. We should never miss out on any Moshe the Baker. Or uh, who knows what. And um, you see, the more we fix our roots, the more we have our act together. And the moment you have your act together, then the way, so to speak, heaven is leading you by the hand. It's, it's, it's completely... It's a different schedule. It's not much a different schedule. And um, I bless you also sometimes with non-scheduled flights, you know, mm-hmm. suddenly out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And Mamish, thank you so much. It comes from Santa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.